Hello and welcome to your finally named podcast. We have settled on a name, I know. You would think people as uber intelligent as us would be able to come up with one on the spot like that, but... um. Yeah, but um, I, I, I was a big problem. It, well, <laughs> I mean, if I won the one that much, I would have fought for it hard, so... Yeah. Uh, we, we are going to be officially known, for now, as a healthy discipline podcast. There we go. Yeah, so the the reason for the name is uh, obviously we're talking about health, so that's where the healthy part comes in, but then discipline because we believe that you need to be disciplined in the stuff that you do if you want to be healthy, but also ties in with the martial arts and that kind of stuff. But hopefully it's it's self-explanatory enough anyway. Yeah, and honestly, discipline's part of the uh, thing that um, I'm not sure about Dan, but I've definitely struggled with the most whenever it comes to living a healthy lifestyle. Oh yeah. So, like, I I can eat good food, healthy food. I can exercise a lot, but doing it regularly, yeah, that's quick. Oh yeah, no, I'm, a lot of my uh, time is spent trying to adhere to my own standards and be disciplined enough to cook my own meals most of the time. Which, thankfully, now I do. It was a long process, but now I do that. I exercise regularly every day. Try to do at least something again. Um, practicing discipline. Yeah. But it's to, I've actually started cooking a lot of my own meals as well. Um, not healthy meals. I've been well, practicing. I've been practicing with making my own burgers. That's healthy. Not healthy. Um, <laughs> and like again, as long as you're cooking home home cooked food, no matter yeah. what you cook, it's going to be healthier than buying it out of a box. Well, I mean, I'm I'm taking I'm taking the the mince and then I'm chopping up bacon make like uh-huh. bacon lardons and then mix it in, mixing it in with the mince and then like grating cheese into it and then mixing that in and cooking that as a burger see you're talking to the wrong guy if you want to think that that's unhealthy <laughs> i think that's, i think that's healthy oh it's so nice though <laughs> yeah it's supposed to be you get all your fat fats that you need your fat soluble vitamins you get your proteins you get your connective tissue like collagen and all that other kind of stuff you get your creatine in the beef yeah. it's very healthy anyone okay. who tells you it's not healthy is a liar and I mean, I was putting them in a brioche bun. Okay, that's the unhealthy part. <laughs> With American cheese on top. Uh, you know, like cheese slices. Uh, I feel really bad for being an American, but I, I can't even say that that's cheese. Oh, it's not. like I. So the way I was doing it was whenever I would flip the burger, I would put the cheese on that would basically just like melt lightly on the already cooked side of the burger. Mm-hmm. And you could see the edges that were like touching the pan were like going just black they weren't like melting or dripping or anything they were just well, it's like whenever you set plastic on fire yeah you should try it with other cheese there's a, a a good one a polish cheese you can get at tesco i think or other places it's adam it's really good in burgers yeah i might i don't know i don't know if it's polish cheese we just get it from the polish section uh, yeah it could just be yeah. um eastern european or whatever yeah because there's another one that we get that uh and it really likes Gouda, but that's that's not Polish. But it's it's skewed. It's well Gouda it. than American cheese. Yeah, it's much greater. I, apo- I apologize. It was terrible. Um, yeah. Anyway. I, I, I did actually make, I made some, not homemade pasta, but I made some pasta dishes. There. You should learn how to make pasta. It's not actually not hard. I'll no, show I, you. Something. I know it's not. I, I need a... A roller. Yeah, luckily yeah. they're quite cheap too. We need to get a new one, but it's like 15 pounds. Yeah, so um, uh, we actually have a topic for for today, as we usually yep. do, and it's going to be on um joint health. Um, uh, I I was watching a video the other day, and it got me kind of thinking about uh the longevity of joints through exercise, and how it's um obviously the more you exercise and the harder you go on yourself. The least the less amount of time your joints are going to be able to sustain. Um, I don't know a whole lot about it. I think Dan probably knows a bit more than me. But uh, before we actually start that, I wanted to say something about I was I was watching videos last night. I have the weirdest YouTube uh, homepage you'll ever see. It's just the one video to the next video. You can't compare them. <laughs> oh, mine's the same. They're so random. 
Yeah. One of them, I kind of, you know, like, you see the first lot, and I was like, nah, I don't want to watch any of those, and scrolled down a few times. And there was a video that came up saying, um, belly fat. Top 10 tips to get rid of belly fat. Yeah, targeted fat loss. I literally, I seen it and went, what absolute tripe is this guy going to spew? So I clicked mm-hmm. it. And the first thing, okay, first of all, the first thing you want to know about belly fat, about how to get rid of this fat, is sugar. Consume less sugar. None if possible. Well, no, you don't want to consume no sugar. Why not? I mean, you can. But a small amount of sugar has benefits. No. Energy. Oh, yeah. If you're just going purely for glucose reasons, you get that for your body makes glucose. Yeah. But I mean, like honey. Um, Honey's fine. It's different, though. You know, those are different things like that. But it was, <laughs> it literally just said cut all sugar. And then. Um, well, that's just a generalized fat thing. Like, yeah, it was every tip this guy was reading out. I was going, uh, this is, he says he's a doctor. I kind of don't believe it. Mm-hmm. Um, there was nothing in there to make me think that he was a doctor or even knew anything past basic nutrition. Because it was like, yeah. don't eat as much sugar. Um, well, I didn't think of that. <laughs> work in a calorie deficit. Come on, uh, didn't that either. I know. I know. Consume high fiber because high fiber diets have proven to lose weight. Mm, no. It's what? like, do I want to be consistently or constantly chronically bloated? Mm-hmm. Uh, have digestive issues. Yeah. Sleep more. Yeah. Oh, that one makes sense. But again, that's common Yeah, sense. that one only makes sense if you aren't already sleeping enough, though. So. Yeah. If you sleep more, it's actually detrimental. <laughs> Mm. Um, depends on the quality of sleep. Oh well, yeah, there's that. Um, but it was all these like super generic tips. Yeah. And then I was like, I wonder what the comment section's like here. And I went and looked at the comment section. Comment section was all, "Wow, excellent tips! Thank you very much. You've helped me so much." And that was like, so many comments. And, and those, was... that was the whole video where the, those were didn't offer. Th- those were the offered solutions. Um, what the the points I made like the basic nutritional stuff? Yeah, there was ten of them. I don't remember what they were all all were, but they were all like really basic things. Okay, you know, oh, but there's no way of learning how to apply them in your life other than don't eat more sugar. It's like but, yeah, but, but what if you're addicted to sugar? Or what if you don't even have that problem and you're still fat? What if you don't have any of these problems and you're still fat? What else, what is it after that? Yeah, I know, I know, um. And I actually got there through watching a video of a guy who did 100 burpees every day for 30 days. Mm-hmm. Don't know why you would do that to yourself. I wouldn't do that. <laughs> I hate burpees. Just, I had to do it one day. I was doing a live stream and I was doing burpees for every death. Oh, yeah, no, I remember that. Yeah. Nope, no thanks. I might no. do it. I might actually do it just for the fun. <laughs> You know, like David Goggins says, I hate running. That's why I run so much. Yeah, well, that's why I'm trying to run. Yeah. I um, hate it. I just, I, uh, I just thought I'd break, bring that up because I hate seeing things like that. I was watching this video and the whole time I was like this. Well, at least probably, it was... You know, probably like, my temples, you know. At least it was real advice, kind of, you know. It... it some people would watch that video not really you know that don't know anything and go oh okay i actually learned something from that and it makes sense but there's other youtube channels out there that do spot reduction it's like well if you do crunches for 45 days you'll lose this belly fat in this specific part of your no that doesn't work that's not how fat loss works it's either all or nothing you know you can't specifically target an area to burn fat that was the whole point of the video was it was specifically targeted towards people that have belly fat the one to lose belly fat but you can't target fat loss no. Like, if you could, if you had, like, fat arms, a lot of people have start to get, whenever they start to get fat, they get it in their arms, in their, like, tricep region, and get, like, big bingo wings. If that was the case, you would literally just grab a weight and go. <laughs> and yeah. you'd be sorted. You would, yeah, just do tricep extensions all yeah, the time. Yeah, you're, you would be sorted. The flat would yeah, never then, reach your belly. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, my understanding with fat loss is though you gain it in certain areas first and then it it spreads out into different areas. So you always yeah. the one that you gain first is always the one you're going to lose last. Yeah. So if you gain belly fat and then it spreads up, you get some on your chest and then it moves into your face. The place that's going to lose it first is your face and it's going to work down to your stomach. Yeah. And again, it depends on where your body naturally stores fat deposits. Yeah. Some people it's, get in the thighs, some people get it in their butt. Men, unfortunately, are more visceral fat, so it's around the organs. Women are more, uh, you know, like belly fat and stuff like that. So yeah. they're lucky. So, um, I, I wanted to just ask a question to you off that video, which was, what do you think about people targeting videos towards specific area of fat loss as a means of promotion? So, like, these guys know... Fat loss isn't targeted. Well, it's essentially what I said. I think it's ridiculous. Anyone who says that you can specifically lose body fat in a particular area is lying to you. Yeah. But it's used as a promotional tool. Yeah, and, and I think it's dirty. You know, people think, I, I have excess belly fat, so I, I need to find a video. How do I lose excess belly fat? And it's a popular search phrase, so they would look it up, and then these guys would give them these generic routines that are just abs. And then they wonder why they're not losing any weight. It's like, well, because how about you You realize that you're building muscle underneath that fat and it's pushing the fat out further. You're not actually doing anything to address the fat. Mm -hmm. At least I, with the video you were telling me about, they do say, okay, well, limit your sugar, don't eat whatever. Stop drinking whatever, but doesn't necessarily mean it's going to target your belly. It, it, you will reduce fat in general if you eat excess amounts of sugar. One of the tips was actually cheat meals. Yeah, that's more of a for morality thing. Cheat meals, you know, they don't really do you any benefit, you know, physically anyway. That they're quite bad for you physically, but um, they help you mentally. Yeah, um, I'm gonna name this video "Top Tips to Combat uh, Belly Fat." Brother. This one? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. Maybe. Well, it's, it's proven to get views. <laughs> top tip is ignore whatever that is, and then do what we can, maybe. <laughs> yeah so uh with that it'd bring us on to um uh joint health yeah you want to take us into that or yeah so the the topic came about because you've been experiencing joint health or joint issues recently right with, with your runs and things uh um, no 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 uh i was actually at the start of lockdown because i was I wasn't really exercise. I was doing little bits and pieces, but I wasn't doing much. And I was just sitting in this chair gaming most of the day. And my hips, my left hip was locking up. Which is, I'll be honest, it was probably some sort of left over injury from before we stopped. Need to work yeah. out a bit, but. Your bike accident and stuff. Yeah, it could be. Because you haven't really recovered from that, have you? Um, My shoulders are. Uh, so. You know, we've worked together, we've put so many locks in me. Like, I've always had really flexible shoulders compared to what's normal. Yeah. Same as you. Mm -hmm. But now my shoulders are quite tight. Okay. From, yeah, that's right. From the last time I came off the bike. Yeah, so it, you landed on one side, but then because that's tightened, the other one's kind of tightened yeah. up in the front as well. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so I, I don't really have much joint issue. Um, my, my, Shoulders are still more flexible than with what the average would be, even though they are much tighter than they were. Yeah, um, but I would still consider that an issue. Like people, like I say this to people all the time: if I lose any form of any any of my range of motion, I consider that a problem, even if I'm still more flexible than you. Yeah, well, so, so do I, which is yeah. something that I've been working on. You know, like the, the stick stretches and stuff. Mm -hmm. Doing those, where yeah, and then you're bringing it down behind your head and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah, well, um, it was actually an interesting topic in to, to bring up because Mikey was the one who wanted to bring up this topic, um, which perfectly aligned up with what I've been doing some research in recently because I, I have a, a goal of increasing my flexibility. I've always had a very good range of motion, uh, but I want to be able to do full side splits and full front splits. Very good. And, yeah, and to really enhance my my flexibility. So joint health, flexibility, they go kind of go hand in hand. Um, so the thing that I sort of want to talk about was um, how flexibility fits in to everything and then sort of 
try to change or get you to think about flexibility in a new way. Because recently, due to my research, I've since changed my position on flexibility and mobility. Because we had a previous podcast where we talked about it briefly. And my opinions then do not reflect my opinions now. Um, so just to start off with, uh, the way that flexibility and mobility get used in sort of like the common conversation, like if you're talking to anybody who's into health and fitness, they'll use them as two, two separate things. But as far as I'm concerned, it's just semantics. So to me, they're the exact same thing. It's just, they use mobility to describe a different facet of flexibility. So the way that I choose to, to think of flexibility is there are two types with two subtypes. So you have dynamic flexibility and you have static flexibility. And you would know this as well from when we do dynamic stretches in our classes. So that's just flexibility through motion. So you're, you're throwing a, a, a high kick, say, that is a dynamic stretch. So you're moving to do the stretch and then you have a static stretch where you're sitting on the ground and you're touching your toes or something like that where you're not actually moving. So the two subcategories for that would be active and passive. So active is when you're actively contracting the muscle and passive is when you're not actively contracting the muscle. Mm -hmm. So say if you're doing a static passive stretch, you're just letting gravity do the work. So you have your, you know, you're doing say the splits or trying to attempt the splits. You're, you have your legs out and you just sit in that position and relax into it. And then you have the active one where you're actively contracting the muscle. So if I'm say doing a high uh, if I'm standing up and I'm doing a high kick and I hold my foot in its position, that would be a uh, active one because my muscle is actively contracting to keep my foot in place, but it's still technically a stretched out position. Yeah. So those are the I something in my eye there. <laughs> yeah, my me too. <laughs> um, so those are the four types. So there's the two main types with their two subcategories. You have um, dynamic, uh, active, passive, and static, active, passive. The dynamic stuff is what most people would refer to as mobility, but mobility is a much broader uh, thing, in my opinion, now. So the, the human body is just designed to move through space. That's the, that's the only purpose for it, really, is, you know, or the, the larger muscle groups anyway, to help you navigate your way through uh, space. Mm -hmm. So there's a thing that uh, I was listening to another podcast about this, and they were talking about the six pillars to movement. Um, and it, that consists of flexibility being one of them, uh, strength, endurance, speed, coordination, and agility. Before we started the podcast, I was talking to Mikey briefly about this. I actually think agility is a combination of speed and coordination. So I, I wouldn't really count that one unless there's a, a more convincing argument for agility. I think it's only really five pillars, but flexibility is one of those key components for movement. Um, and that is really just the range of motion that your joint can can do there's uh i lost my train of thought there agility no no sparking it, it. <laughs> no that's not sparking it no <laughs> i'm just yeah so describing movement so that that is movement to me so uh, any any time if i refer to mobility that would be referring to all of those sort of com a combination of all of those different things that you need in order to move properly. So if you want good, strong, uh, healthy joints, they need to be flexible and strong. Uh, if you want to, 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 uh, minimize injury, those are the two main ones. Cause if you have a strong joint, you have a stable joint. Mm -hmm. and if you have a flexible joint, you also have a, a joint that can't be, uh, overly strained because it already has that range of motion. Uh, endurance, speed, and coordination, I would say, aren't quite as important as strength and flexibility when it comes to mobility. If you, if it's one, if it is a goal of yours to be more or to have more endurance, that's absolutely fine. If you want to be faster again, that's absolutely fine. Coordination is another one that I think would be quite important, but that helps you avoid getting injured because you're better coordinated. You can avoid certain things. Um, but as far as having healthy joints, uh, working on strength and flexibility can help correct any issues that you might have. Coordination is yeah. a hard one as well because it's you have to kind of be born with it to a certain degree. Sort of, yeah. If your brain works that way, it might come easier to you. But coordination is it can be trained. Like as you know, I can't throw with a dam. I can't. Ca I can't catch yeah. with a dam. I, I, I don't have whatever 
the hand-eye coordination is for catching and throwing, I can't do it. But I can punch someone. <laughs> I can yeah, land the in the same spot every ever. single time. One of the weirdest things my experiences with Mikey was he had a snowball and he went to throw it out a window and I have no idea how it happened, but I saw his arm throw straight and the snowball threw directly, like exactly to the right. And I have no idea how he managed to do from his arm moving that way. The snowball went the other way. It just made no sense to me. And I, I watched that happen. I don't have a clue how that happened either. Yeah. Um, My hand art coordination was terrible too growing up. Uh, it only got better after I started playing rugby and then I started learning how to juggle. Yeah. So it's something that can be trained, coordination. Um, I, I tried training mine just through, you know, with friends, just throwing stuff back and forward, catching and stuff. And I was always horrible. I don't know what it is. Maybe I got hit in the head and there's some kind of disconnect in there. <laughs> well, that's him. I no coordination idea. though that you're talking about, there is there are other types of coordination. Like you're coordinated enough when it comes to hand, foot, sort of moving yourself throughout space and martial arts, you know, it's a complex set of movements that you need to do in order to throw somebody. Yeah. Yeah. But then at the same time, that's all through repetition. Yeah. So like I said, it's a skill. It's something, coordination is something that can, can be developed over time. Yeah. Yeah. So when we're talking about joint health, you said um, about hard training over time that eventually wears away at the joints. I disagree. Okay. It can. But that's if you're not training properly. So if you don't have a particular range of motion and, and you know your bones are sitting in this particular position and, and you start pushing past it and you're grinding bone against bone or cartilage against cartilage and it's just wearing or and it's wearing away at the cartilage, then you'll eventually end up with bone problems. But if you ever end up in pain while doing an exercise, you're not doing it right anyway, your joints should theoretically be fine if you do things to, in in the in the way that your body likes to move. Mm -hmm. So if say there's I used to buy into the idea that there was a perfect way to do a squat, you know, for everybody, it has to be your feet have to be this particular distance apart, your knees need to be going in this particular direction, your back has to be in this particular, you know, orientation, your hips have to go in this very particular way that everybody needed to do, but everybody everybody um, has a different movement pattern. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so I found out that I got an awful lot of knee pain whenever I did a, a, a strict squat, mm -hmm. and I couldn't figure out why, but all I had to do is turn my toe out slightly and move my heel, my left heel out just a little bit, and no, there was no pain whatsoever. And yeah. my squat, I could lift heavier. It felt more comfortable for me. Same thing with a deadlift. You're told that, you know, as long as your back is in alignment, as far as I'm concerned, whatever way you want to have your feet and your knees, that's absolutely fine. Yeah. Well, it's, uh, f it's funny you say about squats, Whenever I used to um, uh, go to the gym for PT sessions, uh -huh. that's what I always get told was at the bottom end of my squat, because I can, I can squat weight it, I can squat pretty low. Um, and that's partially due to the likes of you and, and Ryan and other people who, whenever you do squats, it's like, that's not a squat. Your ass didn't touch the ground. Go to it again, you know? <laughs> Um, so I, I can get quite deep on those squats, but once I reach parallel with my knees, as soon as I pass that point, my hip pushes out, mm -hmm. like pushes back. It curls to the very base of my spine. The rest of my back straight, but just at the bottom, just above my hip, goes into a little curl. And that's something that, at this point, genetically, I think is my body just has to do to get down past that point yeah so um that's for me saying that you know like there's one way to do this though? exercise it's perfect sorry does it feel comfortable enough when you do it though it's fine yeah if you feel fine yeah that's the thing like if your body if it feels okay it's okay yeah so it's not like um jerry who's the same age and height and weight as you can do it this exact way but you can't so you're wrong and he's right it's yeah, as long as it feels like it's a natural movement for you, that's okay. There are there, there can be an argument for compensation. So some people say if they do the squat and their knee comes in, and they say, "Well, that feels natural to me." It's like, no, you're you're compensating, you know, through a different. Your, so your knee is weak, so that's why it's coming yeah. in. So another part of your body's compensating for that. You do need to develop so that you do have a particular stance. But if yeah. if you can go through the proper range of motion, feeling it where you're supposed to feel it, that's fine. Yeah, I don't think I ever really had an issue with you know like. I know a lot of people, there's a lot of kids that I teach who I have to 
go back and reset and teach them from the ground up again because every time they go to do a throw their knees should be here and they mm -hmm. yeah that's a structural weakness if they, yeah. your knees knock in you yeah. know that's not very good then i have to go back and say listen you're not going to throw this person you're just going to lift them constantly mm -hmm. um they think i'm just getting them to practice the throw what i'm actually doing is building strength yeah and that's a way to do it you know same thing if you want to develop your nice low squat and the best way to do it is to get into a, a low squat and, and repeat that yeah eventually you'll get the range of motion yeah so um i'm sorry i think i broke your train of thought did you i lost it then i don't know maybe uh, <laughs> the way i've always thought about joint health um not always recently i guess more recently in the past few years i've always thought of joints more like a um how would you put it? Uh, like an open and closed mechanism, I guess. Okay. Not sure. Or, I or like, like a lock in a door. You know, there's only so many yeah. times. Yeah. There's only, only so many times it can open and close. Oh, okay. Before, yeah. before it's no longer fit for purpose. Right? Okay. Um, and obviously there's exceptions. Like there's guys out there that are nine years old that are fit as a fiddle. Mm -hmm. no joint pain no anything but for the majority yeah. of people by the time they get to 50 even if they have been relatively fit are 50 60 and very much struggling with bad pains and joints yeah well again reasons for that to happen is um for one there's a muscular weakness and that's why i was telling you about uh you need strength uh to help with stability mm -hmm. in, in the joint so if you have a say this is my shoulder joint and that's you know, my fist represent, uh, sorry, if, if anybody's just listening audio, they won't understand. So um, <laughs> how do I describe it then? So one of my hand, one hand represents the shoulder capsule and the other one represents the top of the humerus. So if you have certain muscles, like uh, one of your shoulder muscles, say it's overdeveloped um, or no, well, that's less likely the case. It, people have very underdeveloped shoulders, yeah. um, but they have a, a What's the muscle called? Oh, well, just I'll not bother with the names right now. So, if you have a weak muscle, it'll pull it away from one spot, and another one's over tightened, it'll pull it up. So, it's actually lodged inside, and you get something called a shoulder impingement. I had that in one of my shoulders. I can't remember which part of my rotator cuff uh, was underdeveloped. And then there was another muscle that pulled it into another part of my shoulder. So, anytime I lifted, I would feel a grind and then a pinch. And then I would get quite a bit of pain, but I wouldn't get it on the other side. Mm -hmm. So there was a, a, a very obvious muscular weakness in my rotator cuff. So I worked on uh, fix or strengthening up my rotator cuff. And now I don't, I, now it glides freely with no issue. I, I can crack it every now and again, cause it lifts up still slightly. So I have to pull it out and then strengthen it up. And then I, I feel fine as long as I do that. Yeah. Uh, they don't touch cause you're, you have the cartilage on top of the joint and on the other side. So the two points, so say your elbow joint, you have the two ends of the bone. They shouldn't actually ever touch. The cartilage shouldn't be rubbing against each other. You have that uh, padding between it, the synovial fluid of the joint, and that should glide it across. So you shouldn't have any issues that way. There's only if something is wrong. So like the muscular imbalance, like I said, pulling your muscles together or your bones together, or it's a dietary issue. So, you know, how I like to talk about carbohydrates and chronically elevated uh, insulin and yeah. why you need to change your diet. Mm -hmm. These things can affect your joints as well. So you can get uh, different types of arthritis can be caused through autoimmune reasons. Yeah. 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 And weaken the, the, the structure of the, the joints. Mm -hmm. So your diet has a big point in it or part to play and your obviously your exercise and uh, range of motion as well. If, if you have like I was saying before, if your muscles are incredibly tight and other ones are really loose, they're pulling in certain directions. You have to strengthen the ones that are really loose and you have to stretch the ones that are really tight. And that's obviously not accounting for um, someone that maybe have some kind of defect within that joint or muscle. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but if you, if you do these things, if you have a, a proper diet where you have plenty of collagen in your diet to help rebuild the cartilage after it gets damaged, if you have uh, a good strength building routine and a good flexibility routine where your joints never rub up against each other, you, you know, you, your joints will last you for the rest of your life, you know, without any issue. Yeah. 
my body is a temple. Yeah, I try, uh, I try to make it. <laughs> um, so one of the big ones, whenever people talk about joint health, the majority of the time conversation is surrounded with running. Because okay. running, running is supposedly one of the worst things you can do for your body. Oh, yeah, for your knee joints? Uh, yeah. Knees, hips, and ankles. And hip. Yeah, um, knees, hips, and ankles. I, I don't know if I agree with that entirely. Um, because, I mean, people have been running since the start of time. We're built to run. Yeah. Human I, beings are built. We're the best runners on the planet. Yeah. yeah we're not because, the best sprinters. Because a lot of people would like to say that other animals are much faster. That's that. That's true. Yeah. But we're better runners. Yeah. I mean, longest. whenever we were, you know, cavemen, you know, whenever, mm -hmm. whenever we were. Yeah, quote unquote uh, cavemen. Yeah. Whenever For we were. Yogurt. Yeah. Whenever we were running around in loincloths and barely had any communication developed, you know, couldn't write, couldn't read any of this stuff. Entire clans, entire villages had to uproot and move and they would run almost non-stop for days and days just to get where they needed to go well seasons change so you need to change your environment before we were yeah. able to control our environment we'd have to to adapt and or well because we couldn't adapt we had to leave yeah and we had to leave yeah. quick we didn't have any cars if there was some immediate danger we'd have to run away if there was food scarcity we would need to make sure we go somewhere else but that's 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 how we developed you know yeah. from an evolutionary point of view that's what the achilles tendon was designed for which is a shock absorption yeah. so again the way that because uh, i think this is what you're trying to allude to when it comes to running is the way that they've designed shoes for running encourages heel striking that forces the shock to go through your ankle into your knee and, and straight up into your hip and that's where a lot of these issues these uh uh, joint issues come from but if you land on if you do midfoot striking or forefoot striking where you're running on the pad of your foot you get proper shock absorption through the achilles tendon which is what it was designed to do yeah and uh this is something we've both been doing recently and yeah. uh, our calves can attest to it oh yeah <laughs> they're lighting up and even my achilles tendon like the muscles around it they're they're lighting up i swear that's the ankles are getting thicker because of it yeah well, I mean, yeah. that's that's a crazy thing if you think about it. Mm -hmm. You could have been running for years. Well, you have been running for years. You've been playing different sports, doing different things. Yeah. And and then you're kind of like, you know what? What if I run on the ball of my foot? And you start doing that. <laughs> and it's almost like you've never worked your legs before in your life. Well, that's the interesting thing. When I used to play sports, I actually always, because I'm a sprinter, you know, anytime I ran, I would always sprint. So that was, sprinting is more of a pad of the foot sort of, action anyway yeah um i've just never had the endurance for long distance running but now i'm trying to change my mentality for the first time ever i ran in my minimalist shoes because i have minimalist shoes for for gym work and i have proper running shoes i say proper running shoes the ones that are specifically designed sorry quote unquote designed cheap, for running cheap running shoes <laughs> yeah, they're expensive oh are they mine are cheap yeah yeah mine are mine are the asics ones oh. um Good, good quality pair of running shoes, or what they like to tell you is a good quality pair of running shoes. And I, and I do like running in them, but as soon as I switched to minimalist shoes, for one, it was more difficult because my feet weren't strong enough for running. I, I use minimalist shoes for my everyday walking, which is I'm used to fine now. But while running and you're impacting the ground a little bit harder, and then there's some stones sticking up, you, you feel it. Um, but it, it, my feet felt so much lighter and free when I was running with them, and because you don't have that heel. Uh, there to to limit the how far your heel drops whenever you take your step you actually feel it a lot more like because you've been running with your running shoes if you switch to minimal running shoes you will actually feel it even more in your in your uh achilles and in your calf yeah and um, i did a 10k running in those as well and that was that was tough for, the, for, for, for whatever run done, yeah. yeah but it was also really tough on my calves yeah Oh, well, my yeah. recovery is getting much better. Yeah, well, I mean, doing the 10K is an achievement whenever you consider, whenever we started running. Mm -hmm. You know, by like 2K, you were like, I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> this isn't for me. I'm too big for yeah. this. Mm -hmm. um, I'm too heavy for running. But yeah, I think, like we were saying before, I think human beings were designed to run. You know, like we evolved in that kind of way. That's why we're hairless and that's why we sweat. 
Yeah. Uh, they they Just... did competitions between human beings and horses, you know, to see who could get uh, to a particular place faster. And a, and a human running would actually get there faster because we don't need to rest as much. Yeah. You know, they may be faster, but they can't handle running the same uh, pace that we can for as uh, as long as we can. Yeah. Um, there's even a song about it. Baby, we were born to run. Mm-hmm. You know? And um, ultra marathons are really proving that as well. You know, you people yeah. are running for days and days. You know, you get some rest, but Mo- Moab two hundred. Yeah, I recently listened to a book, Born to Run, and they were talking about certain tribes in America and Mexico and things that are just that's this part of their culture is just to run. Yeah, it is. And they're barefoot practically. You know, just yeah. in little sandals. Yeah. So they're minimalist running as well. People make fun of all the, like the uh, Ethiopian runners that are winning you know like all the all the marathons and stuff Mm -hmm. there's a reason they're winning those marathons yeah they're they're really designed to run though like they have longer legs and they're you know shorter torsos they're very thin (laughs) that's because they've been living in in africa in the heart of africa where like a lot of these guys grow up in like small villages or small towns Mm -hmm. you know if they go outside the towns there is real dangerous wildlife they have to run yeah you know whereas here you go you go outside the town what you find a docile cow and a couple of sheep might stumble across a fox but it'll run from you before it ever attacks yeah no we don't have anything to run from anymore no except other people yeah so um and the whole thing you can go on the internet and you can watch almost any video of someone talking about running um who isn't a professional runner who doesn't run like who's just doing it to lose weight or to prepare for a fight and they will all say well you know i used to run i don't really do that anymore because it's really bad for your joints it's not sustainable mm-hmm. but then if it's not sustainable why haven't we figured out a better way after so many <laughs> hundreds of thousands of years of advancing technology and advancing how we do things it's because we don't need to. And that's the thing. People keep applying technology where it doesn't need to be applied. Like our bodies are already designed to do that. You just need to do it in the right way. I can understand you can make a point that um, because of roads and things, you know, the, the ground is much harder than it used to be. So running on that kind of surface isn't necessarily good because it, it adds more of, a, of an impact when you, you put your foot down. So if we were running on grass, it would be different. Um, so that's why I'm not completely against the idea of wearing shoes, but you want to have minimalist style shoes where you don't have so much of a heel and there's yeah. no uh, difference in drop size, you know, like because the normally in most running shoes, you have a much thicker heel than you do have uh, at the forefoot. Um, and we need that to be a zero drop. So everything's entirely level. I've always preferred shoes like that. You know, I've always worn like Converse and things like that that have a zero drop, but they, but they kind of cramp. I think they're more crampy and not, my feet don't fit in them very well. Yeah. Yeah. And they're still slightly thicker as well, the soles than the minimalist shoes that I wear now. Yeah, they are, yeah, yeah. Um that that'll probably cover running. Uh so the the other thing I was saying was um uh lifting. In terms of joint health. Heavy lifting, power lifting, things like that. I think it's atrocious. Like I, I've said it before, I don't really agree with powerlifting. It has its uses and stuff. Mm-hmm. Maybe, maybe doing powerlifting once a month or whatever if you're at the gym every week. But I don't really think powerlifting should be a norm because every, no, case, well, every almost every case I've seen of someone who's taken powerlifting serious, I've ended up with major health issues, cripples. Yeah, but I think that's more a product of being at the top of your game, no matter what. Like they, I've, they've done studies on athletes, and they don't live as long because they push their body to the the limits, mm-hmm. um, and that's just a consequence of that lifestyle choice. Unfortunately, if you're you know constantly trying to get world records, you're you're lifting weights that your body hasn't um, worked up to, you know, properly. You know, if it's just a one rep max, that's the maximal amount of force your body can actually produce and there's no way you can do that safely if you're training regularly as a regular person doing powerlifting, and you make sure that you 
do your incremental increase in, in strength and, and you're paying attention to the stability of your joint through strength and flexibility training, you should be fine. It's just, again, the higher level athletes that want to compete or people who don't know how to train properly and how to protect their joints properly. Uh, they're the ones that get injured. There is a right way to do it. Yeah. Just most people won't, you know, or not that they, they won't. It's that they don't know how to, or they've never been told how to. They just think that's a heavy weight. I pick up the weight. I put the weight down. That's how I'm supposed to train. Me said, see no. big weight, me lift weight, me strong. Yeah. It's like, well, um, can your can your shoulder handle that kind of weight? Well, I can pick it up. It's like, yeah, because your body's really good at compensating. You know, you're like, I've pulled my back a few times because I thought I could lift a particular weight, but my muscle disagreed with me and then it compensated another way. And then I pulled the muscle and it's like, yeah. Yeah. Um, that's, uh, so I'm trying to think of the right way to say this. Basically, if if you do all those things in the powerlifting, you know, if you make sure, like if you're doing a, uh, uh, what you call it, you know, the Olympic one where you up to your chest and then up, I forget the name of it. A snatch? Yeah, if you're doing like snatch or whatever. Or clean. Yeah, if you're doing like yeah, a, clean, the a one cl- where you... clean, and, clean and press. Yeah. yeah. If you're doing that, so you obviously need to have good, good mobility, good strength in your shoulders, right? And, yeah, and, flexible wrists and stuff, yeah. And, you know, good development in your chest and your legs and your back, really. And shoulders. Yeah. Um, and if you're doing that to any sort of competitive level, basically you're saying that you're going to almost exclusively shorten, shorten your span, your lifespan, right? Because you're doing it past a point, which is a normal point. Oh, I wouldn't say specifically powerlifters. I think it was just professional athletes in general that stay at that high performing level for a very long time. Well, so, so powerlifting, I think, for an everyday person, isn't viable because there's too many variables that you have to look after every time you go to lift. If you enjoy it, I don't see any problem with it. Again, as long as you do it safely. Yeah, I'm I'm not telling anyone not to do it. It's just my opinion. My opinion doesn't really count for anything. To be honest, I'm not a doctor. Maybe I'm not it. a physician. I'm not, you know. So it doesn't really count for anything. I just, I've never seen a case of anyone who has been older than me and has said, oh, I'm a powerlifter and then not grab their back and went, oh. <laughs> you know, or went. Oh, I can't move that shoulder at all. You know, something. There's always something like quite bad. Yeah, but again, they're throwing around super crazy heavy weights that they probably haven't gotten used to, and they're doing compensations. And then, even you know, if you have to look at powerlifters' diets, they're not exactly the best either. So they're not. It's not exactly conducive to recovery, yeah. or they don't even let themselves recover properly a lot of the time as well. So that's a big thing, not having adequate adequate rest and recovery times. Yeah. So you don't think joint health is anything? To do with that you think it's more just it's the way that you practice yeah it's the yeah. Pr- it's the practice more than the joint itself it's not that they're putting too much stress on the joint it's that they aren't look they aren't uh they aren't oiling oiling the the joint i guess yeah I, well it's more um something you said something it's like there there's not not really there's no such thing as a bad exercise it's just whether or not it's right for you to do. Because like we said, every body and shape is different. So there's some certain exercises that you probably just shouldn't do because your body won't let you do that. Um, and it's not the exercise's fault. It's just the way that you do it and your method of doing it that could be wrong for you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So um, like I said about my own knee, if I com- if I continue to squat a heavy weight, because that's a powerlifting activity as well, if I were to continue to squat in the way that I was squatting, I would probably blow out my knee. But if I squat the way that I like to squat, that's comfortable for me, I'm fine. Yeah. Okay. So it's really, yeah, I guess. Yeah. Learn your body for one. And then also, you know, pay attention to the cues that you, you get sent, you know, uh, or the, as you do the weight or whatever uh, as technique or exercise you're doing, figure out what it is that doesn't feel completely right to you and try to learn the difference between something that it you know, feels dangerous versus it's uncomfortable because I'm not used to doing it. Yeah. 
sometimes you just have to do an exercise to know, okay, well, that doesn't feel right for me. I didn't, you know, if I continue with that, I will hurt myself versus, oh, uh, I'm not used to this exercise and I need to develop this, this skill to do it. Yeah. Have you had yeah. anything like that recently? I'm, do, I'm learning the splits. <laughs> I mean, you were saying that at the start, yeah. Yeah, I'm learning, I'm trying to learn how to do the splits. So um, the technique behind that is interesting. Um, and it hurts like hell, but it's, again, because I'm not used to doing it, it's less about, um, what was the other thing I was saying? It's not like the exercise is wrong for me. And, you know, I know the difference between it not working for me versus I'm just not used to it yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's just about gradually every day getting that inch further. Towards yeah. It. And just a, a side note on stretching. Um, this is another thing that I, I've, I've sort of learned with flexibility training is that you want to try to treat it like strength training, uh, like sets, reps, and things like that. Um, before I used to think that stretching was just static stretching and you have to hold it for however particular, you know, however many minutes. Um, but that's not really the case. You need to actually have a set goal of how many reps and sets you want to do. And then once your muscles are fatigued, obviously give it enough rest time, depending on your own body. Some people do well with one day rest. Some people need two or three days. It's just knowing what your body's like. Yeah. Well, um, so far the training I'm doing has been, it, I've like, you know, I've already, I've always had a high range of motion, but it, this is actually helping quite a bit. And I'm strengthening them sort of like the more internal muscles in my thighs that I didn't realize were even there. So I'm, I'm finally being able to support my own weight while having my legs out. Freakishly high level of movement. Higher than average, but I wouldn't, I'm hoping to get freakish. <laughs> you will be once you accomplish this. Yeah. Maybe some Cirque du Soleil stuff. Uh-huh. Like a contortionist. You were already close. Oh, I don't um, think I could do contortionist. I don't think that's healthy. <laughs> <laughs> Too much range of motion then once you have too much range of motion then you get back into the stability issue with your joints yeah well that's that's all to do with um uh hypermobility and stuff yeah that's where, an actual the, the the joints actually are too loose from the or you're just naturally too loose every, to... everything is just too loose yeah yeah so all they your benefit muscles are too loose to hold the, everything in place yeah they would benefit a lot more from strength training than they would flexibility training yeah. Um, hypermobility actually runs in my family. My sister has problems with hypermobility. Runs in my family too. That's probably why your shoulders are so relaxed. Well, that's, I think I would have had very bad shoulder issues if it wasn't for the fact of me starting to train and mm -hmm. getting the muscle on my bones. So yeah. that I could actually, you know, bear yeah, that I think weight. Like my mom's got hypermobility, my sister's got it. I'm, I have a higher range of motion than. Uh, my you know, the, than what would be considered normal, but because I have the strength to support it, it's hard to tell if it's hypermobility or I'm just flexible. Yeah, I'm definitely once you flexible. Get flexible. Once you have flexibility, it's the easiest thing to sustain as well. Uh, first, you know, if you do strength training, you don't train for a few months, you lose your strength. Same thing with speed; you lose your speed after a few months, you lose your endurance after a few months. But flexibility is one of those things where once you have it, it's almost permanent. Yeah, um, it takes a lot longer for it to actually fade away uh, and it's really easy to maintain as long as you maintain it regularly you know like uh, a a routine that gets you into these motion movements and postures that you you want to to keep as long as you do it once a week you're, you're you're pretty much fine yeah i need to really get back into um trying to stretch to increase flexibility rather than just stretching to stay loose yeah, well, I'm once I finish, you know, doing my research and stuff, uh, and coming up with routines, I'll let you know because yeah. the stuff that I'm doing is it will be designed to increase range of motion. Do a podcast on that. Yeah, both dynamically <laughs> and statically. Yeah, because there's an interesting thing about dynamic and uh, static flexibility; they're sort of independent of each other. If you are dynamically flexible, that does not necessarily mean you are statically flexible, mm -hmm. and vice versa. Vice versa, yeah. Yeah. Because it, it are two different modes of uh, two different mechanisms uh, of of moving. Yeah, yeah. Well, I've I've mentioned before, and and you know yourself, having obviously we've worked together, we've worked out together, all kinds of stuff. Um, my lower body flexibility is terrible. Mm -hmm. My upper body is fine for all yeah. intents and purposes, but lower body, I'm like a uh, nine year old man. 
Hey, kick this guy in the head. Okay. Yeah. That wasn't well, even close. <laughs> you know? <laughs> um, that dynamically, I am more flexible than I am statically, and I'm trying to balance that out and go. Yeah. yeah. So I can kick really high, but I cannot hold my kick high if uh, statically. Yeah. Yeah. I don't. I think I can just about hold my own hip level. Yeah, I'm above my own head level. Yeah, but well, that's. But that's dynamic. But if I were to do that in a static position, I can't do it. Yeah, it's weird. Yeah. Oh, there you go. So um, I think that'll uh, do us for today. Yeah. Yeah. I think it was a good conversation. Yeah, especially and we since. The name. Yeah, I know. Especially since this is one usually we try and prepare a little bit, and um, we're trying to make this. Uh, we wanted it a conversation style podcast, and we kind of felt like we were getting a wee bit away from that. Yeah. Uh, so we're trying to bring it more to a looser theme and more conversational. Yeah, and this will be a discussion, but you know, with both Mikey and I, and we're going to formulate our ideas a little bit better. You know, a lot of the times you just need to talk about it to understand the things that you've learned. Yeah. Um, my favorite thing whenever I, I teach is like the best way for me, the best way to learn is to teach. So the more I get to talk about it, the more I get feedback from Mikey and other and other listeners, you know, what you guys think about our opinions, the more I can shape my own ideas on things and then hopefully educate at the same time. So, you know, to help you grow and develop your own ideas. Yeah. Yeah. Planting the seed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So um, that's us. Yeah. Uh, thanks for listening, watching, whatever, whatever you choose to do. And uh, we will see you in the next one. Yeah, thanks. Peace. Bye. Stay healthy. Yes. <laughs>